Hey everyone, I'm back with another quick tutorial and this time we are diving into the world of creating a snazzy 3D glass portal using 3Gs. It might seem like a walk in the park but trust me there is a bit of complexity involved. We'll be tinkering with some data structures and getting into nifty crifty of physics to make this portal pop. Before moving on, if you're interested in learning more about 3Gs and working on some cool projects, check out our professional 3Gs course, which is designed to boost your web development skills. Find the links in the description and take your skills to the next level. Alright, so let's jump right in. First things first, let's create a 3D model. Forget about importing from my GLB file this time. I stumbled upon an empty Mountain Dew portal on my desk and uh, we are going to use it as our canvas. Here's where it gets interesting. Instead of the usual import route, you're turning to Luma AI to work its magic and turn our portal into a 3D model. Don't freak if you are without an iOS device because Polycam is another alternative way. Capture your video or some photos around your model for accuracy and then we wait for the processing magic. Once the model is good to go, it's export time. Navigate to the assets and you'll find a bunch of export formats. Uh, GLB is an option but this time, I'm feeling that's plat format. Hit the export button and now when you check out the model in the app, you might notice some scattered particles that don't quite wipe. So we need to clean this up. We're heading out to playcanvas.com to tweak the scene. I have put in some work and the model is looking pretty darn close to the perfect for our test. Now comes the fun part, writing some code in our workspace. Let's uh, roll up our sleeves and bring this portal to life. All right. Imagine this, you got all these 3D shapes, graphics floating around and we want to organize them in a way that makes sense. That's where web workers come in handy, doing some heavy lifting for us. So I made this web worker that's like a superhero for 3D graphics. It can handle things like multiplying matrices, doing fancy math with vectors and highlight sorting these 3D shapes based on their depth and where they are looking from. Sounds fancy, right? Well, there is a secret sauce for this and that is called counting sort algorithm. Let me break it down for you. Imagine you got a bunch of numbers all mixed up in a list. Some numbers show up more than once and it's a bit of mess. Our machine is to clean up the chaos and put these numbers in order from smallest to biggest. Oh, and there's a twist. Some numbers might be negative just to keep things interesting. First step, figure out how many unique numbers we've got. Let's call that as Yen. If Yen is, let's say 17, we got 17 numbers in our list ranging from zero to nine. Don't forget, we got negative numbers too, just to spice things up. Now, we're going to count the number of numbers that's being repeated. So we are keeping tabs on how many times each number shows up in our list. Picture this, we are scanning through an array and every time we see a number, we are going to increment this count value. Once we have counted everything, we know how many times each number is being repeated. Now the fun part is sorting. We loop through our count list and organize the number based on its popularity. Now let's tie this back into a web worker. We got this function that does the heavy lifting like matrix math, vector magic and special sorting trick. It looks at these 3D shapes, filters out the ones we don't need and sorts them neatly based on how far they are and uh, where they are looking. Cool, right? Behind the scenes, a web worker is like a little helper responding to messages, clearing things out, adding new stuff and sorting things all based on what we tell it to do. All right, so in this file, we have created a special material called splat material using a helpful tool called shader material from the DREI library. This material is like a wizard for 3D graphics, which is designed to make cool 3D splats or graphics in a scene. Breaking it down, the vertex shader is like choreographer deciding where and how these splats should move in 3D space. Meanwhile, the fragment shader is the painter choosing the colors and deciding if these splats should be visible. If you're interested in diving deeper into this, you can find out more information and reference down in the description. Just feel free to have a look at that. So in our app.js, we define a class model function which defines a 3D scene consisting of two groups of objects. The first group identified by the reference zero includes a component called depth background and another called splat. The second group represented by the reference one involves a rounded box containing a mesh transmission material. The use control hook is employed to manage the user input allowing the dynamic adjustments of parallel like roughness, transmission, rotation and color. Additionally, the use FPO hook is used to create a frame buffer object serving as an off-screen rendering target. Within the use frame hook, the visibility of the objects in the first group is toggled based on the user input and the scene is rendered to the FPO. 
the FPU is then displayed and the visibility of objects is adjusted back according to the user input. The GSX rendering includes the first group with a dipped background and splat and the second group with a rounded box housing a custom mesh transmission material. This material controls the appearance of the 3D object, incorporating the properties such as transmission, roughness, thickness, normal map and the color. I've added scene background already so check out the code if you have missed something. And by the way, if you're new to 3GS, we have a professional 3GS course which will teach you everything you need to know about 3GS. So feel free to check them out. And here's the final result. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm leaving.